So these are primary screenings from Mahan Wastewater Treatment Works in Mahan. So the material is dropped down through the, uh, the airlock system from the top through the feed hopper and we have enough material sitting over the screws to provide sealing again of the material over the screws. The material is fed through the, through the, uh, up through the uh, conveyor into the loading hopper at the top. We have an airlock system which releases just the right amount of material at a time whilst maintaining a perfect seal uh, to stop the air getting into the primary chamber. The material is propelled by individual motors on the screws, the augers, material passes down the primary chamber over the course of a, a number of uh, hours it may, it may take an hour or more to, for the material to pass uh, we control the amount of air allowed into the primary chamber through a series of belima valves uh, at the moment they're all closed so there is absolutely no air being introduced into the primary chamber uh, the system is working in steady state as we look across the bed of the primary chamber we can see that there are no flames being generated on the material so we're having pure gasification the flames are generated when we add the combustion air on the far side of the, uh, of the, of the uh, aperture into the secondary chamber the synthetic gases which are generated in the primary chamber are extracted via an ID fan which is pulling all of the gases through the process Synthetic gases are combusted by simply adding combustion air, which is through, controlled through this valve. The air, when it meets the, the oxygenated air, when it, when it meets the synthetic gases, uh, causes spontaneous combustion, and then all those all of those synthetic gases are thermally oxidized in the secondary chamber, passing beneath the primary chamber and sustaining the autothermic reaction. The gasifier is a very well insulated box, and the amount of heat needed to sustain the autothermic reaction is not that great. So we end up with a residual heat in the exhaust gas, uh, 750, 800 degrees plus. That heat is extracted via a heat exchanger to hot water. So we use hot water, we use cold water to, uh, to cool the, the, the exhaust gases from 750, 800 degrees down to 150, 160 degrees. And they're cold. At the moment, we have no application for the hot water, so we are rejecting it via a dry cooler. Here we have the hot water, the cold water, returning to the heat exchanger, and the hot water being pumped to the dry cooler. And we are currently using a fan to reject the heat to uh, to the building. The, dry, the, the, uh, the, water, the hot water from the heat exchanger is currently being cooled with air from the building via this dry cooler fan. So the balance of the exhaust gases, at, uh, cooled exhaust gases at maybe 150, 160 degrees Celsius are filtered via a ceramic filter. The ceramic filter removes any remaining particulates uh, which are collected on the surfaces of the, uh, of the ceramic elements. Uh, the ceramic elements are then cleaned by a reverse pulse of compressed air, which knocks the particulates off and they are collected in the, uh, in the sump at the bottom. We then have uh, a dosing system, which uh, if there is a content, a content of HCL, SOX, uh, and other contaminants in the exhaust gas, we can remove those using reagents which are dosed into the exhaust gas stream but upstream of the filter. The balance of the exhaust gas is then at less than 140 degrees Celsius, uh, rejected to atmosphere. All the functions of the AGS system are controlled through the PLC. Everything is automatically re regulated. All of the flow of the gas is through the process and the temperatures are monitored and recorded. We have data logged performance data for every uh, every hour and every minute of operation. 
the filter removes the, the ceramic filter removes any remaining particulates in the uh, in the exhaust gas stream, uh, so it's fully compliant with the emissions industrial emissions directive. The ash is accumulated in the bottom of the uh, of the device and augured out to the bin, the ash bin, which takes many months to fill. Uh, it needs to be changed on a very infrequent basis. The residues from the process are a mineral flinty ash which is completely denuded of any organic content and this material has a end-of-life application as a mineral for construction materials.